hold that then. Okay, let's call the meeting to order. Two five, six, five. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We will call the members to this, please. Councilmember Rochester. Aye. Councilmember Mori. Here. Councilmember Moore. Aye. Councilmember Hunter. Here. Supervisor Tromboy. Here. Okay. Um, need to approve the minutes of the previous meeting, May 10th, 2022. I'll make a motion that we approve the May 10th minutes. I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Next is uh, presentations and petitions, communications, general question period for members of the community. Uh, please try to limit your comments to three minutes. And welcome, everybody. Uh, whoever wants to go first, please state your name and your, oh, you're gonna let me go. your name and your address, okay. please. And name and address, sir. Yes, please. Uh, my name is Jennifer Jewett. I live at 11109 State Route 9 in Champlain, across from the old telephone company. Um, I'm here to petition for stricter uh, animal control laws. Um, I myself have had three, I will call them attacks, in the last few months while walking my dogs in the village of Champlain. I attended their meeting last night to try to also get stricter laws. Um, the first one was on, was on South Street. There's two dogs that are tied up all the time and as I was walking down the street one broke through its chain and came right at me and my dogs and scared me to death. That was only two and a half months ago. The second time was when I was on Spruce Street. I was walking and a Rottweiler broke through its electric fence, came right at me again. It was a 150 pound Rottweiler, scared me to death again. And the third time was two weeks ago when I was on South Street. My dog was attacked by a bull mastiff that actually broke her skin and she had to have staples. It came through an electric fence. Um, I feel as if it's not safe to walk in the village of Champlain and I'd like to see a few changes to the dog laws uh, for everyone's safety. I did go to court for that third case and that dog is now to be confined to a kennel. Um, but uh, that was not the dog's first bite to another companion animal so it should not have been on an electric fence. Um, so this is what I propose. Uh, it's currently a New York State uh, animal um, cruelty law that a dog not be chained out for more than three hours at one time. And I think to make that a town law, it would stop people from having excessive tying out of their dogs. Maybe that would help with the case. Um, I have dogs confined to a residential property by an electric fence, I believe that the electric fence should not come within 10 feet of a sidewalk or a common area or another property. Um, in this particular two cases, those dogs broke through the electric fence and came right at me. Had it been set back, I feel it would have maybe, maybe, maybe it stopped, would have stopped them, I don't know. But I also feel that there should be a, they should need a permit in order to have an electric fence um, by the town so that we know where the electric fences are and I feel they should have to have like a, a little shield sign, which a lot of people can get, that says, you know, property guarded by an electric fence. So walkers, passers-by, know that in fact there's an electric mm -hmm. fence being used. I don't think these are unrealistic expectations. Um, and I propose that dogs with repeated offenses of where they come through the electric fence or are deemed dangerous not be allowed on an electric fence. Um, if I had been a small child, this could have gone really bad, and it already scared me to death to the point where I don't really want to walk in the village right now. So something needs to change, and I'm asking that maybe you can help with ideas to make things safer for pedestrians around town. And in other cases I've had in the past years, because I walk a lot, I've had five dogs rush at me. People that just don't keep their dogs on leash, they just come out into the street and come right at me. And it's very scary. I've been told to carry a club or a taser, and I don't think that's... That's really anything I should have to do. 
but I do carry my phone in case something happens, and it's, it's very scary. Um, and I feel like if these, these minor changes were put in the dog laws, that when we have dog attacks or dogs that lunge at pets or people, you could use it to prosecute these people if they did not have the proper permit on their electric fence or, you know, or if a dog is dangerous, if it attacks a second time. In all three cases, I did contact animal control officer, and he had written up a report on these cases. But I don't know if a whole lot was honestly done, except for the one where I went to court. So. Okay. I have, it on, I have your letter uh, attached to new business so we can discuss it and decide how we want to move forward. Um, I do like a lot of the suggestions. I think we could probably try to incorporate some. Like, I myself have a invisible fence for my dog. I like the idea of having a sign. I, I'm already currently 10 foot set back just by luck or more, but I think the sign is a good idea for people that are walking by because sometimes when you see a loose dog in the yard, you don't know whether they're tethered on electric fence or not. But we need to discuss it as a board and determine if we're going to you know, move forward with trying to revise our laws to incorporate these changes or not. But it will be considered. Thank you. I just plead for everybody else who's also out there. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that hit home with the animal control officer, and I'm not slamming on him, is that in each of these cases, uh, or in the last case, I was told not to discuss it with townspeople. And I don't agree with that because I think it's important for people to realize where there's an opportunity to get bit in the neighborhood. I talked to the, you know, I talked to the mayor in the village, and she also walks her golden retriever, and we commonly share where things happen just to let each other know. Because, you know, had somebody else gotten attacked after my last incident, that would have been horrible. And I was told not to discuss it, and I don't really agree with that. Anybody walking with a five-year-old could have gotten mauled by that bull mastiff, just like my dog did. So. I think it should be open for discussion among people where it's dangerous to walk. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, from what, from what I understand, he's, he's aggressive to other dogs, but not to, to people or children. Just to clarify, that's at least the conversation I have with Jody. Um, but, but it's still scary. But if, yeah, if he's aggressive to other dogs and there's issues with other dogs, that's a problem. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that they did force them to kennel mm -hmm. and keep them you know, safely restrained. I hope that works out. I hope they get by for that. Yeah. But anyway, thank you very much. You're very welcome. Sure. And you're welcome to stay if you want. If you, uh, I'll take you off. Want. Okay. I appreciate everybody. Thank you very thank much. Thank you for your time. You. Like no. I said, we will be talking about this in the business. We'll consider it. Thank you. Perfect. Hello, my name is Clifford Sterling. I live on 8 Prospect Street, Rattles Point, New York. May I uh, hand this to you first? Okay. Just some photos. Mm -hmm. Now I'll discuss it, it makes more sense. Okay. <clears throat> so back, I don't even know how far back it goes, but um, Luck Brothers came and did some work across from my house on the bike path, which is a great idea, 100% um, for it. Unfortunately, what happened back then is that there was a ditch in front of Dave Bogart's, and if anybody's familiar with that, it's the top of the golf course when you come into the village. There was a ditch right in front of Dave Bogart's that went across down to the Pillsbury Road. Luck Brothers buried all that in, took all the culverts out and buried everything in. Why? I have no idea. So there's no place for the water to drain. It flooded out in front of the trailer at Dave Bogart's and behind the house that's owned by Bourgeois. The, bill, the town of Champlain came in and they tore that whole road out, I guess maybe eight years ago, literally from the top of the hill down to the railroad tracks and took all the tarmac out, and in the process, they put a culvert in there that comes right into my property. The problem is, the culvert doesn't take anything because there's no ditch. But what it does do is that the neighbor across the road, because he gets so much water, he has, from what I understand, four pumps in his basement. He had hooked up a pipe, dug a hole, put it underground to there's a manhole cover, and in there, you'll see on his property, there's a little green pipe sticking out. There's a manhole over there, which goes to that culvert that goes in across the road into my property and just floods it out. And you look at the pictures, it's gotten, uh, it's gotten horrible. I've called Alan Racine. He's come down a couple times and dug it. It's a five-foot grade from my driveway down to John Oliver's house. That, that's a long, that, that's a huge drop. And 
for some reason, they still haven't been able to dig it enough and get the right pitch for the water drains all the way down to Oliver's house. It only goes halfway, and you can see the water in the ditch line where it stops, right by the, the electrical panel box that the village has. There. It's as far as the water goes, then it stops, and it doesn't drain any further. With that being said, I can never mow my lawn up there. I, I tried. I put a lot of money into my property. If anybody knows what the Ankel Farm used to look like. I worked very hard on it. I'm trying. They, they dug half the ditch away. There never used to be a ditch there at all. They put a ditch in there. They chopped half the ditch away where you can't mow, can't do anything. What I'm asking from the board, that culvert does no purpose. That, to clarify, because I saw in the pictures, you've got to point it out as a, as a pipe so that it goes, it's right at the corner of Pillsbury Road. It's just about, it's about five feet in from the Pillsbury Road by the bourgeois house, the, the picture of the house I have. So it's, if you're going into the road of the Pillsbury, it's on the right-hand side, walks in about from here to Miss Rochester, and there's a, a little manhole there that goes into the culvert that goes across into my property. In there is a green it pipe. It crosses Prospect. It crosses the road, yes. There's a green pipe in there about four, three inches, four inches, big around that goes back up to Bourgeois' house and drains his water. That's the only thing that culvert does is drain his property, nothing else. I want to, I want to, I want to seal the culvert up. I want the culvert to stop putting water into my property. Is what I'm looking for. Now, I don't want to do it without somebody knowing what I want to do. Either that, or have the town come down and take the time and fix the whole pipeline, or put a culvert in, or bury the property, do something. My honest opinion: seal at the end of it. We solve the problem. That's their problem to get rid of their water, not the town of Champlain nor mine. Behind their house, there is a ditch line. It's, 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 there's uh, cattails. And it's a swampy area, and it goes back into the golf course and heads down the Pillsbury Road. I encourage the board members to go take a look at the property. You'll see what I'm talking about before anybody makes a decision. Mm -hmm. I just, I would like some help in, in solving the problem without doing something drastically. I'm just, I'm just getting frustrated. Okay. And that's, um, you know, I, I don't want to go ahead and pour you know, half a load of, of, of cement from diesels and stuff and have <laughs> the town call me up going, what the hell did I do? But um, that, that's the point I'm at right now. And it's just, if the culvert wasn't there, we wouldn't even be, I wouldn't be having this discussion. So the, the grade on your property all runs toward the village of this place? Yes, it does. Okay. I tried working with the village. Unfortunately, it's not the village's problem because it's the town of Champlain. They have come up and tried to help me with the property a little bit. But when they tried digging it to make it better, like I said, they just took away more of the of the side of the road for it drops straight down so there's nothing you can do and I'm, I, I personally said I like to put a culvert in from where it comes across the road and run it all the way down to Oliver's house that's a lot of money and I don't think Town Champlain should have to do that either when again the culvert all that does is empty the basement out of the bourgeois house and nothing else so I'm just looking for some help yeah so I guess without seeing it and going there with Alan and, and really um, trying to determine the best way to fix that I don't think blocking the culvert and causing that's, a secondary problem is what I want to do. Right, and that's what I'm saying. I, I don't want to get to that point. I mean, yeah. that's, why I'm, that's why I'm here. we got to figure out. Like I said, it's just, it's drain. only his basement is what I'm getting all the water from. I just, I, like I said, I just want to mow my own lawn and be able to take care of my own place without having, it's uh, in the springtime, it literally back where it goes halfway up my property, and you can't mow and for the first month when everybody else is mowing because it's so swampy out there. It, it, they grew corn out there for years. They never had a ditch. So the problem only happened when they buried up all the ditches when Luck Brothers came on the, in. On the south side of the road. On the south side of the road, which again, I don't know why they buried all the ditches to begin with. That's what causes all the problem now. It's, there's no place for water to drain. So the culvert that sits there, there's no ditch for the water to go in, so why is the culvert there? <laughs> That's why I'm just asking the town that somebody could take a look and say, he's got a point. Well, why is it here? Other than to drain the neighbor's water into my property. Is there another way to divert it to, you know, like add to the culvert where... Uh, honestly, if somebody was to come up who really took the time and, and, and took a... Analyzed uh, it? Uh, what I want to say, the, the measurement and stuff for that and get the proper pitch. Because from I talked to several people who, through Jeru and stuff, who do drainage all the time. They said, all you need is an inch. But if somebody could actually take the proper measurement and, and get the proper uh, debt down to Oliver's house and do it the right way, and where is, does his drain into a storm drain eventually? Or? His, he has a storm drain in his driveway that, that goes underground and heads right down to the village into an actual 
sewer drain, yes. Okay, so it kind of sounds like I need to get Alan and Adam together. Know this point and see if we can determine if we can. Right. Because again, I have talked to Adam too, but like Adam said, his hands are tied. So. Uh, now, from what I understand, there is a drain on the Pillsbury Road right across. I said, why can't the guy tie it into there? Like I said, if his water wasn't coming from my property, we wouldn't have any water. There's a storm drain just on the opposite side of the Pillsbury? From what I understand, yes. On um, Dennis sure. Rich's property. So maybe a culvert into that. But I think either way, I'm going to need Rouse's Point involved if we're going to try to put water into the storm drain. So. Right. No, understand. I just wanted to bring it up so we could start well, seeing what we can do to fix yeah. it. That's all I'm asking. Okay. That's it. Thank you. Yeah, let me. Uh, Thank you for the Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, we do get a lot of rain sometimes. And I have a pond in my front yard for. We don't mow on the front of our yard. Well, you'll, you'll see on the, on the cedar line by Oliver's house, you'll see where the ditch line is a tad lower too than, than the ditch out by the road. So it's, it's just all back, back flows. Like I said, somebody went up there and just took the time. Okay. But they could probably fix it without taking away. Right. I just, I need to still mow it though. That's all. Right. Okay. Thank you. I'll, we'll look into it. Appreciate it. Richard, do you have that? Do you need to address the board in any way? I don't have anything to address. I would. You're just here to, to witness, okay? Well, thank you very much. Uh, supervisor's report. Good evening, everybody. The town and I wish to extend a thank you to the Champlain Technology Group for installing the town's hometown hero banner. They're always willing to help their community, and we really appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you to our water operator and the highway department for their quick response and hard work after hours to unplug a wastewater main on Ridge Road about three or so weeks ago. This was fixed quickly, preventing any interruptions in services for our customers. And I really appreciate the after hours uh, time that they've devoted to this. The highway crew has been busy cutting grass on the sides of our roads, parks, and cemeteries. Paving is scheduled for the 1st of July, therefore, they'll be busy preparing the roads for paving this week. They'll be out doing ditching, etc. In addition, we'll be installing signs and delineators on our rec trail as well very soon. I want to say thank you to the Women of the World for their donation of a U.S. flag for our Bob Van Park. This organization very generously donates hundreds of flags each year to area municipalities and not to profit groups. Thank you again. On June 7th, there was a presentation on the history of the Perry's Mills Frog Farm. Thank you to the Clinton County Historical Association for putting this presentation on. Here at the town, we had our first food truck event at the town offices on May 25th. It was a very well attended event and the food was delicious. I want to thank Councilperson Bori and our Secretary Saragano for organizing this event. And I'm sure you want to report more in regards to the upcomings. Um, an update on the Champlain page on the TDC website. Where Better has completed the design stage, so the pages are ready. They are currently in the process of doing the drone photography and is expected to be completed soon. I will receive an email from the TDC as soon as it goes live and I will let you all know so you can check it out. We had a leadership meeting on June 9th and we discussed various topics. Uh, for one, the 5K run that we talked about last month, we have scheduled for August 13th, starting at 9 a.m. We decided that the 5K run on the rec trail will start at the trailhead in the village of Champlain, either on Elm Street or Bill Oro Park, probably to the high school, and then return to the park. This is to keep the distance as 5K. If we ran the, the whole... Um, the whole trail from Rouses Point to Champlain, we'd be doing probably a half marathon because you've got to return the people back to where they started. That's where they're parked, for one. Yeah. Um, there was also concern with the safety of, of a large group running on Prospect. So this was uh, an agreement between all of us that this would be the best way to do it. So uh, 
Janet's going to measure it out. Once it's measured, we'll confirm the starting point and the, uh, the turnaround point. And we'll make uh, more plans as to what we're going to be doing at the park when they return. We may have, other than just you know refreshments such as water and stuff, maybe we'll have, uh, think about getting a food truck or something. But it happens to be the same day as CTG's uh, celebration, so we don't want to uh, compete in any way. Um, poutine month we talked about. So poutine month will be in August. We have uh, four participating restaurants. One was to be confirmed with uh, with Judge, uh, excuse me, with Mayor Levante. Uh, participating restaurants are Border View here in Champlain, Sandy's Deli in Rouses Point, Gino's in Rouses Point, and Best Friends is to be confirmed in Rouses Point. Uh, so there will be little passports given out, and we can all visit these establishments, sample their, their poutine, and we'll, uh, you know, you're welcome to buy other foods as well. But it's you know, we haven't decided if we're going to uh, give it give out shirts or anything like that. But that's scheduled. So Tom, is there a committee that will judge to determine? No, it's not really a judgment. Okay. It's, it's really meant to get people, it's like they do in Plattsburgh with the, with the, good. With the, Mich <laughs> with the Michigan uh, Day. Is It's not meant to be a, uh, a competition, although a lot of people do that. They yes. will go to all of them just for their own you know, personal competition, and they will say who's the best because they've heard all about it. Right. Um, but no, it's not meant to be a competition. It's meant to get people out trying the restaurants. Right. Um, we had discussion regarding shared services. There were no decisions made at this time to report. The St. Mary's Bazaar was held on May 29th. The attendance for the day was astounding. And what a great tradition here in Champlain to kick off, kick off the summer. So I want to say thank you to all the organizers for their hard work. It's appreciated by the community. And I know firsthand how much work it is. So thank you all. Uh, announcements. The Village of Rosses Point is holding their village-wide yard sale on June 18th. Rosses Point's 4th of July Stars and Stripes celebration is being held June 24th through the 26th. Uh, with the parade on the 26th, I believe. There are primary elections being held here at the town offices on June 28th from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. We are doing a dedication to the Harry McManus Northern Tier Rec Trail on July 9th at 10 a.m. That will be, I don't have this on here, but for those who wish to attend, it will be held on 276 at, at that crossing of the trail. Um, and we will be parking at the school, provided that the Parking at lower parking lot, the south end parking lot by the fall field is available. And we expect it will be. There's no construction at that section, so we should be able to use that parking. Uh, there will be an additional primary election held at the town offices on August 23rd, 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. We still have COVID test kits, surgical masks, and KN95 masks available if anybody wants some. Please come see us at the town office. And the town would like to appoint more alternates to the Zoning Board of Appeals and the Planning Board. Please consider serving the town in this capacity as we need talented citizens of this township to become involved and assist us in moving forward. We're hoping we have lots to do here in the next few years. And just to announce, it's they meet once a month. That's correct. Thank you. So. That's correct. Thank you, that's all I have. So, report from council members. We're going to start with you, Ann, today. Sure. Well. Thank you, Cliff. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, Clifford. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for the pictures. I couldn't have figured that out without him. You know, I mean, all the points. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there were a thousand words. Yes, you're right. Yeah. Um, well, I went back and looked at uh, these town policies to check on. 
to refresh my memory. And um, the first one we had on our list was the workplace violence prevention. The only thing I saw in all of our town policy pamphlets or, um, was that, well, there was a little bit about prohibitive, prohibitive conduct that kind of touched on things that shouldn't, you know, be coming into the town office mm -hmm. or other places that were, you know, public. Um, but really nothing. And, and then, of course, the sexual harassment part did touch on it a little bit, too, about prevention of violence in the workplace. But um, there really wasn't anything specifically designed for this. So I just reached out to Jeff Travers, who's the one that did it for us before, years ago, um, just to reaffirm that he said that we can send our uh, employee handbook to him. There will be no cost for him to view that and to go over it and see where we have shortcomings. Okay. And uh, review it. So, And then he will t give us an accurate quote as to what it will cost to um, update our employee handbook. He's done a lot of people, you know, or towns in this area. I know that, that Peru used him, and um, I don't think Shazy did, but... Uh, or is he on it? Um, and what's his name again? Jeff yeah, Travers. Travers, yeah. yeah. Um, I want to say... It's, it's not that terribly far away. I, I mm -hmm. Towards the Albany area, I thought, but... So down south? Uh -huh. So south of Plattsburgh? Yes. Okay. Down south of Plattsburgh, yep. <coughs> you got his contact I information? I do. I just have his telephone number here, and then I have a email that I printed out from him, you know, saying that, that he would not, there would be no cost associated with us sending that, our handbook there to him to review it. Okay, do you guys say a reason why we shouldn't? No. no. I mean, I, I, I welcome the feedback. Yeah, exactly. And see what you right. recommend. Because for there's a lot. I mean, right. we've changed a lot. Yeah. You think of all the different things that have come up. I mean, it's a whole different world now. Yeah, that's right. Very, very true. And, yeah. uh, you know, everybody that I talked to that had worked with him uh, was very pleased with you know, his input and uh, how um, accurate and I feel and they didn't feel like he was unreasonable um, about the pricing. Okay. And that's a lot of work. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. it is. Plus it covers our you know what. Right. So yeah. we can do that. We can send that to him. Did mm -hmm. you compose a list by any chance of policies or what? that we're lacking, that we need to write. Well, what I did was I went through these town policies to check to see what... We do have something on vehicle usage in our handbook. We do have a little bit on the computer and the internet, but not as much as I think that we should. Um, so again, is that in the handbook, though? Or is it yes, I wrote policy? down 500-8 and 500-9. It did briefly. Okay. Say something about it. Travel and conference, all that I could find was um, about expense reimbursement. I really didn't see a whole lot of um, much about. Now, when they said well, on this list I have breach notification, I was thinking, like, what does that mean? Does that mean if the computer was breached <laughs> or if, if that was somebody who stole something? physically from our town office or, you know. So I was looking at a lot of things, but not really coming up with anything that I thought fit that topic. Um, and really they didn't, nothing in our uh, employee handbook said much about credit cards, other than you were the one, one to be, <laughs> you know, making the decisions on that. And then uh, capital assets, you know, um, again, it really was designating, from what I could see, the supervisor, you know, unless you had a comptroller, which bigger places, I guess, do have that, um, that they would be more 
uh, hands on with that. But a lot. And I looked in other people's handbooks, and they were very similar. You know, I mean, there's a lot of the same kind of uh, reiteration of, you know. When we did our training last year, we actually um, were apprised of some of the areas in the handbook where there were policies that were missing. Was that ever given to Anne? If yes. not, I can give her yes. a copy. Yes, Tom that's gave me that. Okay. Well, that. That's this list that I have right here. Okay, that's exactly yeah. what I was referring to when I had I think there's that. more, though. I think there's a few others, I, if I recall. It sounds, like, yeah, I have it sounds like a couple off our list. Right. Instead of living, living in the policy book, they live in the handbook. handbook right. But are there any from that list I gave you that we we don't have at all? Mm -hmm. I guess the question. Well, like I said, I don't have. I couldn't find anything specifically <clears throat> or detailed about the credit card and um, capital assets. That was, you know, not in our employee handbook. But you really wouldn't be having the employees, other than the supervisor, doing a lot of this type of thing. So, I mean, the employee handbook is very specific to, you know, right. benefits. I and, think those were yeah. long policies. Yeah. Right. So I think it'd be good to maybe see, you know, what Jeff Travers rec recommends. You know, mm -hmm. if he's got this much experience working with other municipalities, and, and he let's just, let's draw upon his expertise. But he he uh, did he. Who authored our policies originally? Did he have a hand in that as well? He did. Okay, so I think what yeah. I need is your list of what's missing entirely so we can let him know that we need policies for, for these topics mm -hmm. as well. well. Yep, I mean, I ju just jotted down the sections where I found, found things in the employee handbook. Um, so yes, I can get that to him as well. Okay. And I think you'll feel a lot safer and, you know, more covered yeah. if we have this done properly. Okay. That was it. That was it. Awesome. Jason. All right. Um, let's start with the zoning board. And I should say Councilperson Boria. That's <laughs> okay. Um, so we'll start with the zoning board. Um, there was a public hearing on the 15th of May, and uh, there was one application for the public hearing that was to be discussed, um, the uh, vehicle holding lot, Route 11. Um, and there was discussion of why the application was not approved by the county, um, and uh, so it was um, put forward that the a public hearing be moved to uh, a further date in order to have more details coming from the applicants. And, um, and Julie, feel free to chime in here at any point, but um, just I wasn't able to make the June 2nd um, public <coughs> hearing, but it looked like that the, there was a more detailed application and paperwork yes. that was provided. It was discussed and that ultimately the zoning board did approve to move ahead with the project. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. That um, and uh, there was also um, zoning code workshops that were held on May 11th at five o'clock. We gathered, and then on May 13th in the morning, and then we did have um, discussion. It was um, just Monday morning, June 13th, right, mm -hmm. on uh, our proposed uh, town uh, zoning changes regarding um, solar farm cannabis, um, and our next. The zoning board meeting is scheduled for Thursday, June 16th at 5.30 right here <coughs> at the town office. Um, and the meeting is open to the public. Um, so I'll move on to marking committee. Um, Can I ask a question first, Jason? In, sure. In regards to that uh, application 22001, uh, I know you sent out letters to neighbors. Have you heard from any of those neighbors yet? And if not, what is the period of time that you wait before that actually gets submitted to the county for approval? What application is that? 
you're talking about. <coughs> the Red 11? The Tyler? Yes, the Red 11. The Tyler one. Um, so I sent to, well, it's technically I don't have to send letters to the joining neighbors. It's only law to say that it has to be put in the paper, mm -hmm. but we do it as a courtesy. Right. Mm -hmm. So we send it to the adjoining property owners. Usually it's 500 feet, but I always go further. Mm -hmm. And um, usually we give them until the, they, they get notices well before our public hearing, like at least two or three weeks before. Okay. So, I mean, they got plenty of time to notify us. Right. First time. Yes. But you didn't have any responses in this case. No. Okay. No. Um, is that the one on Passanos or? Yes. Yeah. Sure. No, nobody came in. Um, only um, yeah. after I sent second yeah. letters out, yeah. mm -hmm. the second public hearing, okay. I had one person come in um, just because he was submitting an application too, and then yeah. he just asked uh, some questions, but he wasn't right. like against it or anything. And I, and I noticed in, in the. In written documentation that they talked about fence being installed. So is that fence to the maximum eight foot? What is, I'm just curious. Yes. I don't I'm just trying to wrap my head around some of this. I don't okay. think they put specifications. No, they didn't put. Well, I know if it's more than eight feet, then you have to apply for a variance, according to what I read. Mm -hmm. And that's why I wondered, like, and because he of the amount say. of the assets that would be in that environment, I would think you want to keep it from being I, visible. I, Right. I think it's a standard six foot chain link fence, but I really don't know because they didn't put specifics. No. Right. He didn't say and the, um, the board um, didn't request correct specifics. And they didn't mention specific screening to what degree. They didn't no. I know. So they didn't condition the application at all. They just approved it. Okay. I agree. That's all I have. So I'm sorry, Jay. No. <coughs> I valid. Yeah, valid and I mean it's um, they work. Um, they work independent of us. So that is at their discretion. If they choose to accept something with little to no detail or whatever, that's. Um, um, so going on marketing, um, uh, had a follow up with Boyer Benner Group today. It was interesting that you mentioned uh, the uh, the launch and the. Mm -hmm. um, and the drone footage, because he mentioned it to that, uh, to Did all it? all of that to me as well, um, and uh, they are uh, putting together everything. I I think they've been very busy down on their end, um, so they are going to update me within a couple of days, and awesome. we'll and we'll have something um, available. That's great. Yes. Nice. So we'll be able to share that with the board and share that with um, the villages. Yeah. So, um, what I'd like to. As soon as you get it, you can provide it. I'd like to uh, email both both villages sure. and, and get that communication out right away. I don't want to wait till like the next meeting. And Correct. I like to keep this moving. Yes. Yeah. So um, so uh, as soon as I get that information, then we'll uh, that'll be shared. So I want to take a look at it. Awesome. Um, also spoke uh, via email with Paul Frederick. Um, we're meeting on Thursday, June sixteenth. Um, and I don't know if you want to be a part of that meeting. We're basically going to, I guess, kind of come up, finalize what we're doing for, uh, for the um, for the summertime video. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What day is that? Is it? That's uh, Thursday, <coughs> June sixteenth. And we're just going to do a video chat. So, if you want to join the video chat, it's like it would be like a Zoom or yeah, yeah. you know, just send me a link, please. Okay. That's it for that. Um, you mentioned the Hometown Heroes banner. Uh, banners, um, they're up. If people have not seen them yet, they are on Route 9, Route 9B, Route 11. Um, and much thanks to the Champlain uh, Technology Group um, for uh, assisting in the hanging. You mentioned that. And uh, the, also the Hometown Heroes Committee. Special thanks to the people on the committee, Sarah, uh, Melody, um, and 
yes. all, all that are helping and, and work. And um, yes, thank you for that. Yeah, and we want to also let people know that if they're now that we can see the banners and we see how awesome they are, uh, uh, we've already had some inquiries as to how to get a banner. So if there's anyone out there that would is interested in a banner, um, please contact Sarah Gagno here at the town office, 518-298-8160, and she'll give you the information on the Hometown Heroes banner. Um, we've also, actually I probably should have talked to Cliff before he left, uh, we've reached out to the VFW about possibly have her, having some kind of a uh, honoring ceremony, um, but we're, we haven't worked out really um, any details there, so there's uh, no, that's, they haven't, they haven't yeah, come back with us to confirm it. So there's um, to be continued on that. Um, just a couple of updates the food truck night, we hosted uh, food truck night on Wednesday, May 25th. Um, we had the dog father, Mr. Dingling, here, and you know, as the supervisor mentioned earlier, it was a huge success. Um, it was great. Uh, you know, uh, Mr. Hunter and his family came, and uh, several people from all over the town of Champlain were, were here, and uh, I think even out, outside of the town of Champlain to enjoy the evening. It was a gorgeous night, and it was so popular that we're doing it again. So uh, the next food truck night is going to be uh, here at the town of Champlain office on Tuesday, June 21st, and that's going to be from 4 o'clock until 7 and the food truck that we'll have here this time will be Lightning Lardy's Barbecue. Mm -hmm. So uh, that'll be right here in the town office parking lot, food for purchase, um, Lightning Lardy with cash only, so don't come with a debit card or a, a credit card, Just it's cash only for this particular <laughs> food truck. And if you want to check out the menu for that night, it's, it's on our um, Facebook page. So check out the Town of Champlain's Facebook page, and the venue is even posted there. Many thanks to Sarah Gagno for helping uh, organize all of that for us, and uh, it's a lot of fun. I think we're starting to see something that could be kind of our summer, our summer event. Series. Yes, yeah, it's going to grow. I can, I can see this getting much bigger next year. This is our first yeah. uh, trial at it, and I think next year we'll we'll add to the event. Yeah, I would dare say. That night, there were probably between 30 and 50 people. Oh, I easily. Uh, there had to be, I bet there was more. When I came, you were gone. Yeah. It was 6 o'clock, and there was at least 20 in line. Yeah. So oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. 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 My, my guess is it was 7 or 5 oh, and above. Well, you were asking me that. Um, Sarah would know that. It's uh, the dog father. And I'm not sure um, the actual dog, who the actual dog father is. Yeah, and what did he cook? Uh, they he had quite a menu. Yeah, yes. it's just I mean it's they just had a, French a fried onion rings. They had but uh, a different variety of burgers. They had uh, chicken uh, strips. They had all kinds of stuff. You know, like like uh, fries with uh, uh, cheese and yes. sauce on them. <laughs> uh, I can't say that now. <laughs> well, he's getting a name for himself. That's for sure. Yeah, it's so a I different variety of home. burger and hot <laughs> right. dog. You know, it was just different. And I think that's why it's popular because it provides a another choice right. for folks up here because right. you know, as you see we only have like five or six restaurants so correct and as you know Sarah's uh, I think does a good job marketing it it's a night you don't have to cook and do the dishes it's a night to just go out and yeah, it's just you know take out or, yeah. or, or eat here mm -hmm. uh, and we're not trying to compete with our restaurants so no of course not. we're just trying to give the community something different to do once in a while mm -hmm. yeah. um, uh, worked with um, uh, Mayor McFetridge in the village of Champlain and, um, uh, and Supervisor Trombley on um, our uh, joint uh, resolution to um, thank and uh, appreciate the work that um, now Eagle Scout Richard McGrath uh, did for us. Uh, that's on the table for tonight. Uh, and I'm going to put another plug in for Rouse's points, stars and stripes on the late Independence Day celebration. And I don't know if I can help you. Help me, Richard. Could you look into the view and tell me when this is appropriately uh, put in the camera so it can be read and seen? Is that okay? I mean, I'm in frame? 
Um, Jason, you can also point much, yeah. out it's on their Facebook page. Yeah. Well, if so, you want, you can get closer and like read line by line. <laughs> so this is what's going on June 20, starts the 23rd and goes right through through June 26th. And right, you're it, it, well, it's not a complete it's listing. Not a complete it's list. not, not a complete I, list, I, I but it's a pretty proper. significant yeah. list. And I just want to note that our lovely emblem is on the bottom of this, as we are one of the sponsors of the event. Awesome. And, uh, we want to encourage everybody to attend and check out all of the amazing activities that are planned for the weekend. So, come on down. And they've got a uh, beautiful new set of stairs at the library in Mary's nice. Point, where yes. usually the judging takes place. So. And that can stay here, that can stay in the town office, that yeah. posters for the town. Um, yeah. And now it's in the phone. Yeah. So, uh, so check that out, and you're right, it's on their Facebook page. Uh, uh, Stars and Stripes. Yep, and uh, uh, you can go to the Village of Rouse Point's website, I believe there's also mm -hmm. listings of things there as well. So, uh, so ends the report. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Councilman Moore. Um, just want to mention the Town of Champlain swim program is going to be held uh, from July 18th to July 22nd for the first uh, session and July 25th to July 29th for the second session. It's a free swim program for Town of Champlain residents. Uh, it will be held at the Shazy School this year because they're working in, at Northeastern Clinton, so it will be held at Shazy. And you will be responsible for your own transportation, but the program is free. And it's July 18th to July 22nd, or July 25th to July 29th. It's for uh, children in K through 5. And it's first come, first serve. And if you need more information, you can uh, email at rec, R-E-C, department, D-E-P-T, at townofchamplain.com for more information. And Charlene Sample will get back to you with the information. If you need more, it's posted also at the Town of Champlain, and you can go to the website. Okay. That. that met several times with uh, Alan and, and when we had the uh, zoning meeting, Zoom meeting and other mm -hmm. various things. But that's my highlight is the Champlain Rec Department. Yeah, I was hoping you'd report on that. Yeah. And, uh, <coughs> and the town here has registration forms for families that are interested in registering those children. Correct. And it is for so. first serve because we, we do have a <coughs> limit to the number that we can accommodate because we're using Shazy's facility, Shazy's lifeguards, um, and, and we have a, a new uh, chairperson in that role, so we're, we're kind of limited because we're outside of our town. Is but, there a pool yeah. a similar size to what our pool is here at NCCS? I don't I can't speak to that. that. I can't yeah. either. I've never been in there. It's, I want to say it's it's similar. it's pretty similar. If it's if it's different, it's not different by much in terms of size. Mm -hmm. I would say they're they're pretty comparable. Mm -hmm. okay. well, our school has certainly been a facelift, isn't it? There's it is. such good things about what's happening there. So. Oh, we should mention that the school's graduation is on uh, June. Should I say this right? Um, June 24th, uh, and that's going to be, yeah, June June 24th, um, it's going to be on the new athletic field out out in the back, so, uh, and, uh, will it be on the soccer field? Yes. Yes. It, it, Richard, just remind me, what time does graduation start? 6.30. 6.30, so any <coughs> community members that want to go and see uh, graduation at Northeastern Clinton Central School, there you go. Yeah. And, 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 time. and visit the... <laughs> Beautiful uh, arena. It's awesome. <coughs> That's it. Thank you very much. Council Person Hunter. Uh, just a couple things to report. Uh, I got in touch with um, Chris from the Champlain Fire Department. Really nothing new to report. They're still in the ap application process.
phase. Uh, as far as Rouse's Points Fire Department, uh, on June 26, part of the Stars and Stripes, their chicken barbecue will be held on the 26th uh, beginning at noon, and they are $12 for each meal. Um, just a word of advice, they go quick, so if you want a chicken dinner, make sure you arrive early. Uh, also, the fire department will be doing a boot drive coin drop on the 25th of June, and that will start at 9 and end at 3 p.m. So, um, not much else to report as far as our fire departments. Um, as far as uh, just taking a, a look at um, Sarah's um, annual town finance school that she attended, I gathered a lot of great information in regards to sites that um, might open up some windows for possible grants. Um, the water infrastructure improvement grant, uh, the environmental facilities corporation has a number of grants that I'm starting to look at. Um, the Department of Environmental Conservation, um, also the New York State Grant Opportunities. Uh, they have a huge grants gateway, and so I'm starting to look through that. Uh, and then last, the Parks, Rec, and Historic Preservation uh, is also another source for grants. So I'm starting to take a look at some of those. Good, sites. thank you. So yeah, keep us uh, keep us abreast. I what's, will. What's available? Thank you. So. <clears throat> That's all I have. Okay, thank you very much. Board from Town Clerk. Um, just want to um, let you know that also on August 13th, you mentioned um, Champlain that day and a couple other things, but they're having a town wide yard sale here too. On so the 13th? On the August 13th. Uh, August 13th, thank so you. So if that anybody is interested report. in um, getting on the map, they can contact mm -hmm. me. Okay. And then I just have my report that needs approval. Thank you for that, Julie. I missed, I missed that. My bad. Okay, everybody has a uh, copy of the town clerk's report. I make a motion that uh, we approve the uh, town clerk's monthly report May 1st through May 31st. I'll second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, review of the uh, post audit bills. Any questions on that at all? Yes. So if you go by the park, if you go by the park, Bob Ben yeah. Park, uh -huh. uh, you should notice the difference. It does an outstanding job, mm -hmm. and they're able to mow down in less than two hours. Oh wow! And I, I believe, Hour fall. I don't know if he's mowed it just once yet, but that two-hour time frame was mowing it twice. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, I'm sure if you have a chance to get out on the side, you'll have some stories on the travel to go down there and get it. Because the traffic was pretty thick. Where did he have to go? Uh, Long Island. Oh! The South Am the South Amp, actually. Wow. Um, so <laughs> I had to be that excited. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, quite a trip, but uh, yeah, it works great. And uh, I I see the difference. It really mm -hmm. does a nice job mowing. And of course, if you're cutting your time down from eight hours plus to under two, right. that's, that's, that's worth a lot, both in uh, labor and diesel fuel. Any other questions regarding the uh, the abstract post audit bills and also the additional bills? I think there's yeah, we're gonna do, we'll do that with the approval of the monthly, right? Yeah, yeah, that's coming up next. Okay, so any questions on the monthly bills? These totaled uh, forty nine thousand eighty five fifty four, and we have additional bills. Um, both for monthly billing for NICE, uh, totaling four hundred fifty-six eighty-one.
Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. So, and uh, I, I, I have just a quick question on, on that first page of uh, the bills. They're uh, almost down to the end. They're Sarah Gagnon's. There's two areas there for Flowers Point of Fair. What? Uh, There's two. Was that reimbursement for Flowers that? Was, tell me. We, okay. We, we purchased them. Okay. So at that memorial in that little park, yes, as we call it, there was two flower pots. Okay. And Sarah planted, purchased these flowers and planted them. And I think, they're pretty. Yeah. I think Anne's making yes, them for us. I've been watering them. I'm sending Dan. You've had to water them with all the rain we've had. Well, <laughs> the rain pots. Uh, believe me, <laughs> that hits that. Uh, yeah, yeah, I haven't worried about our, our no. Our I, trees I've much. been there like three times, and that's it to water the trees. Yeah, I'm sure in the month of August we'll, we'll be there a lot, but I haven't put that barrel there. But if you don't mind continuing, I, I just come with a five-gallon pail. I do the same thing, and, and it works. Okay, so I'm fine. Yeah, I've done it a couple of times yeah. too. Five-gallon. That's pails. what I do. I do a five-gallon pail. I happen to have them on the cover. And that's what I have. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So back back to the bills. Any. Uh, can we get a motion to make approval and then we'll discuss it. Is there any other discussion? I'll make a motion to approve the bills as presented. Okay. I'll, I'll second that motion. Is there any further discussion in regards to the, uh, the bills? The monthly bills? Mm -hmm. Any that you're in question on? No. Okay. Roll call vote, please. Councilmember Rochester? Aye. Councilmember Lori? Aye. Councilmember Moore? Aye. Councilmember Hunter? Aye. Supervisor Trumbo? Aye. Motion carries, thank you. Okay, so we have a uh, report from the Codes Enforcement Officer. Um, you guys all had time to see this. He's, uh, he's been pretty busy. He's been assisting us at this point, um, and he has gotten in touch with Miramar again. They are attempting to figure out ownership of the building. They're trying to where to go to board it up, and they are looking to speak with local commercial realtors. So I've got to uh, put on my list to do to get a hold of uh, CDC. See if I can help him with that. Any other questions on that? Next, be the monthly dog report. Dog control officer. And as you can see, he's had a few uh, complaints here in the township. Uh, one being with the young lady that was here to talk to us tonight, Ms. Jennifer Jewett. Mm -hmm. the, the one thing I, I do appreciate in the past, he's um, also included along with his report, the actual documents that are kept on file where we can have record of reoccurring mm -hmm. issues oh, with yes. certain pets. And I'd like to see that continue. Um, so that we almost have a kind of a centralized location where we can identify with, you know, okay. yes. So those fences, those electric fences. I mean, they're problematic. You you can't really trust them. To especially well, you have to dog. you have to you have to train the dog well. Correct. And then you you get the dog trained well enough, you can almost leave the fence off, and they're going to be fine. But it, it depends on the dog. True, the breed um, as well. But yeah. really, in regards to a dog that um, is menacing, Even it, just it, would take, size, it would take a don't... concrete fence to keep them back. I mean, if they want to get around and get by, they, they will. You know, if they're very aggressive to other dogs, it, it's a problem. So they need to find other ways to tether them and control them. <coughs> anyway, Thank you. And, and, uh, Jennifer Jewett, who was here tonight, uh, that uh, is actually in the uh, dog control officer's report. So, mm -hmm. just so that she's aware that it was 
you know, brought to our attention in mm -hmm. addition to her correspondence. Mm -hmm. so. It sounds like she should stay away from South Street. <laughs> <laughs> Two of those attacks were on South Street. Yeah, I, I, I personally think that, you know, pet owners have to be responsible for their pets. Yes, definitely. Oh, yes. Regardless of, yeah. of what that it requires, you know. Right. You just can't put your dog out on a leash and, yeah. and assume that they're they're fair to go. No. Yeah. You know? So, a good and she did bring up a good right. point in her correspondence in, in terms of, you know, uh, New York State anim Animal Cruelty Law, where you've got an animal shouldn't be on a leash more than three hours. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that's not something that's, you know, closely followed. Right. Probably not enforced so. at all. Yeah, well, it's hard to prove, too. That's know, correct. Uh, That's what I said. How, how would you monitor it? There's no yeah. way to monitor that. Well, these days they have cameras everywhere. Uh, <laughs> you know, your brother's watching us. So. so but yeah, you're right. That is not an easy way. You don't need approval for that, do you? For the dog report? No, I don't. Okay. Um, I, I didn't have a report from the highway superintendent, but I. As I stated earlier, you know, they're going to be preparing for paving soon, and he's trying to squeeze in time to install the delineators and the signage. Mm -hmm. He did pull the box of delineators out to get the instructions to start thinking about it, so I got a feeling that if, like, if you can help out, this could be a last minute thing where I'll be like, hey, Alan's ready to do this tomorrow. Right. You know, I've been trying to get a, a kind of a date, but he's... He hasn't given me one, so I think it's going to happen at the last minute. But we're going to have to get out there. And but you see it happening this month? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it needs to be done. I mean, we're, we're getting in the summer here. Right. So let me know. I'll be happy to help. Thanks. Because I figured we could measure, we could do the measuring right. uh, yeah. and so on and, and help them get, get up the road. Okay. Um, correspondence. We have uh, the minutes from the building. Board of Appeals meetings, one on May 19th, one on June 2nd. JCO report. I, I do have a question in, in regards to okay, the I'm zoning sorry. board, specifically the May 19th, Jason, and you, I think you brought this up at our last meeting, um, that um, the zoning board was uh, asking about the possibility of changing our legal counsel. Um, where are we on that? I guess is my first question. And number two, rationale as to why they feel the need to change uh, a position that we've already approved for this fiscal year. Uh, when I brought it to their attention, uh, I said that if they wanted anything changed, they needed to submit it to the mm -hmm. board in writing. Mm -hmm. They had no issue with that. Um, they haven't received anything yet. Correct. And, so I guess what I'm questioning is, is he, is he not performing his duties? Uh, what's the rationale behind it? So if I remember the conversation right, and correct me, Julie, if I'm wrong, um, the discussion was uh, a, another uh, lawyer being used for uh, zoning purposes. They had questions, they had needs, and one legal counsel uh, that they worked with previously, they felt really stepped up and did the work that needed to be done, and their concern was the legal counsel that we had assigned may not be uh, as adequate as that other uh, in, in legal counsel. In that specific field, you mean? Uh, yes, yes. Just I, I think it was based on an ad an, on, on a needed basis. I think that's how they kind of looked at it, and that if they felt that they would like the other legal counsel to work with them that they would ask or request that that be allowed. Okay. And, and, and I have no problem with that as long as it's, it's not a conflict of interest where that legal counsel already represents either the village or houses point or the village of Champlain. So. Yes, we, that would really be the case. did um, like <laughs> having Tom Renee when I was on the planning board because he was very, Good at pointing out things that could be a problem area for us that we would catch it in time before it, you know, became an issue. And he's easy to work with. I don't know so are 
are they having a hard time working with the president attorney? I don't think they've used that. them. No. Well, that's why I'm. That, I guess that's why I'm wondering. Well, what what are they trying to accomplish that they haven't been able? Oh, to I don't. Do? I don't know if there's an agenda here. I think okay. they're. It's based on um, their previous interactions with that um, with with Tom Bernane. Yeah. Their previous interactions and they were very positive. Exactly. And I, yes, and I think they were feeling that if they have similar questions or questions that maybe are more suited for his expertise, they'd rather use his legal counsel as opposed to um, the counsel that we appointed. And that's the impression I got. Do you get, is that true, Julie? Yes. Yeah. So. But they haven't used yeah. um, the new counsel, or attorney yet. Okay, the one that was appointed in June. Yeah. Okay. Correct. I mean, it's been pretty quiet the last few years with, okay. with COVID and everything. Right. There hasn't really been much going on. Right. And we don't have the attorney come for everything, only when there's like a big issue. When Correct. Think there's going to be a right. conflict or something. Correct. Then we'll have him come. But yeah, I, I don't. I wouldn't recommend having him come unless you have, you know, some pressing matter. Uh, I know. Yeah. I know some municipalities have their attorney there all the time, and I, and I think that's I think a waste of to. money. Yeah, we used to at the zone. Yes. He was at every meeting. Oh, he was. But, yeah, but I mean, it got costly, and right. I mean, a lot of times when it's a simple thing, right. you don't really need an right. attorney advice. So correct. No, I they think changed it, and so now it's like on a basics, and depending on what the application is. And I hate to suggest they do this, but they run into one where they really feel they need. Council, they're going to have to table it and we'll have to get council there for the next meeting. I don't want to do that because I think the process is too long to begin with. But it's hard for people to get permits. It takes a lot of time. So the zoning board can't look at the paperwork that they've received and kind of identify the possibility of the need they for should. the attorney? They oh, yeah. And that's what I'm wondering. They I should. mean, they get the application. I usually send it out about a week before um, the meeting so they mm -hmm. can get it. In plenty of time, so I mean, they could come and say, you know, I feel we need attorney. Right. Get, can you get in contact with them? Right, and you haven't had that. So yet. when you when you email that out, make I, sure to remind them to. It doesn't get you for that reason. Are you mailing? Everything gets mailed to them. Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess include that note in there that please review, and if uh, if you need an attorney, let us know ahead of time. Mm -hmm. That would save a lot. Okay, that's the only question I had on that. Thanks. Um, so that brings us to the uh, JCEO report. I make a motion that uh, we approve the month of May JCEO report. Um, A lot of families being served there. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of individuals. We have a second. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Further discussion? No. We should have asked. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. And we have charter communications. We have some exchanges. Just for information, correct? <coughs> Another QVC channel. <laughs> QVC3. There we go. <laughs> With those sales dollars local, folks. Yeah. Nice. Yep. Okay. Clinton County Hughesboro Port. Champlain Recreation Programs, we received 370536. That's awesome. I only had a question on this. I noticed in here they mentioned uh, tracking performance measures and reporting. So is our um, youth commissioner, Shar Sample, responsible for performing this reporting at number one and number two? How's that monitored? I don't know how it's monitored, but yes, I, she would be responsible for that reporting. I don't know if you email and ask that question. Yeah, I don't know. And what kind of timeline there there is for the reporting because in that paragraph they don't 
I don't stipulate as to, but it, again, it might be on correspondence she has. Yeah, it's probably on her, on her annual report, I would think, right? A deadline. I don't know if I'll ask her about that. say from Sarah Gagnon uh, regarding her training in Albany. Is everybody happy with that? I think that uh, what she got out of it was, was all the contacts and the, uh, and the links to the topics. Also not having to deal with three bids for vehicle and equipment. That's a right. state contract which is nice. Yep, she confirmed that because so. we've been questioning that. And then we confirmed it also with the association. And then Chris's report in regards to the New York flood training. I got a copy of that. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Okay, then here's there's one that Rick we wanted to discuss. So this is the the Lex Bank tax exemption program for, for fuels mm -hmm. that we you know, have applied for. Right. And we notified the, uh, the board that we sent the application in and kind of gave an appraisal as to why we were doing it. Uh, do you have any questions? Since no, this was very this? thorough. Uh, both our QA along with uh, the information, and uh, just so um, you know, the public knows. This has to be a reapply for every two years. So, yeah. so what we we're planning on doing, uh, and when I say we, you know, I naturally went through Alan on this, um, is eventually, hopefully sometime this year, emptying the fuel tank, and then we're going to have to look at removing it. There'll be a cost for that. Uh, but the cost for getting out of the building will be thousands of dollars and if we didn't do this we'd be replacing it with a new system which this one is on its last leg as far as the, uh, you know, the car key system for it and a tank mm -hmm. at you know, tens and tens of thousands of dollars mm -hmm. so I mean, this will save the taxpayers a lot of money uh, just by being able to use uh, and shop local. so that, that that's an estimation of what it would cost to replace that tank yeah, I can find out more in detail simply by finding out what the schools invested in uh, replacing theirs. Right. Um, I mean, the only advantage to having your own tank is is that you can purchase gas at when prices are lower, yeah. and not have to deal with waiting. And then you're kind of, you know, minus the excise tax, you you still have to pay the the going market price. So either way, you do. The only the only time you would save would be happen to happen to fill it. On Correct. At a low point. Correct. And then there's those times you're going to fill it at a higher level too, because it bounces around. How often does it get filled? Do you know that? No. I'm curious how many times during the year that gets refilled. I don't know. Do you know, Julie? I, I know Sarah would be able to answer that quickly, but I don't yeah, know how to answer that. I'm just curious. I have a question that may or may not pertain to this. Um, does uh, maybe do municipalities? Um, are they uh, going to be impacted by some of the changes that the state is requiring uh, for um, more electric use vehicles or recharging? Or well, at some point, yes. Okay, so that may be a conversation we need to start having. Yeah. At, some, at some point. I think, personally, I think that their schedule is it's going to be very hard to meet. Um, <laughs> it's unrealistic. Yeah. Basically, it can't be met. It can't be met. Um, just, I mean, to put it more so, so yes. So to to put it bluntly, they're they're saying by 2033 there'll be no more gas or diesel vehicles sold, sold right. in the state of New York. Well, that's going to include municipalities. So so you figure 10 to 12 years beyond that, everybody's going to be forced to. And the grid can't handle it. No, not right it's now. So they're putting the cart before the horse. Yes. 
So, yeah, the short answer is eventually yes. I don't, I don't believe it's going to follow that schedule they've come up with. I, I can't see it. There's no year it's due for you. We should all move. <laughs> it's a federal initiative. That's, that's you know. It is. I mean, you you can see it. That's part of the reason why your gas prices are over there. So. Through that. So anyway, so these are. Uh, we haven't received the cards yet. We ordered cards for Chris and uh, Alan. Do a quick trial, and then we'll be. And we have to work that fuel out of that tank. Mm -hmm. We will be going towards cards for every employee so we can fuel the trucks that board and fuel and the shop local. And we do get this, it's the same pricing as the state pricing. All right. You know, there's no difference, like I verified that. I did have Sarah uh, call Blue Line to find out if we would have a significant um, reduction in our liability by removing that tank from the building. And she said that it would be, it would be a Slim difference, I think was her words, which I was surprised at. And I probably should have asked for a dollar figure to go with that wording. But we'll find out, I guess. For the standard reason, it should help, but I don't know. When you're storing that much diesel inside the building, it doesn't make sense. Then we have the water board uh, letter from, uh, from the water board. From Mrs. Trumbly. I've had time to read that. Okay. Any comments or questions? Mm -hmm. and then Do we want to kind of tie in the water tanks maintenance con contract with that because that's part of? Yeah, we can jump to that. It's that way it's all part of the same. Okay, yeah, so if we want to do that, we can prove that. Now, hopefully, um, I have to touch base again with the mayor in the village because I don't know if the board addressed this last night or not. I forgot to ask, but she was reviewing it. Um, but if you have you got any comments or changes that need to be made, I, I thought it was uh, well written. Um, Thank you. As long as it's gone before our attorney, well, it's going to go there now. Okay. I'm waiting to make sure we don't have changes from either board before I send it to them. All right. So, um, well, thank you. I, I did read it. And, uh, I forgot to put it in there today. I Very well. Right. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if yeah, you, you, made, copies you of just it. made copies of yeah, it. Yeah, no. I didn't find it. <laughs> it's the end of the day. <laughs> Okay, so if nobody has changes to it, I'll find out what the village, uh, if they have any, if they don't, then it'll go to uh, both attorneys for review. All right, well, good. Okay, thank you. So, I do have a, another point of emphasis on um, the Water Board's documentation. Um, as we recall last year, um, Concerns were brought to the town's attention about some individuals um, taking water from fire hydrants. And because we're at the summer months now, we want to make sure uh, of exactly what the actual uh, the code is in the town of Champlain. So I want to read this code 124.45 for the public, please. No fire hydrant will be operated by anyone except a representative of the water district or fire department for the purpose of fighting a fire or a planned firefighter training exercise. And there is also penalties for these offenses. Um, I don't feel the need to read this to you, but I want to just make it, you know, aware to the public that those fire hydrants are only to be touched by certain personnel. They're not to be used by the general public. That's, That's basically correct. what it amounts yeah, to. Definitely. That's right. exactly what it amounts to. Um, and if you know, water is required, it has to go through through the town for permission to use, and we have to be the ones to do it, as you just stated. Right. And I, and I thank, uh, I thank uh, Kim and then also the rest of the water board for their response and uh, their detailed documentation in regard to 
local laws regarding the water theft. So, thank you. Next thing I have is you were copied on it. Rick, you said it was hard for you to read. It um, was. We will. Uh, I mean, it, it is in the small print. These slides are small. <coughs> but right. I, I just got to give you, a, you and the public, a, a general knowledge of why we were brought together last night. Mm -hmm. um, it's because uh, it's time for them to form a, a new financial plan moving, moving forward. I think that they're, if I'm correct, Corey has been 12 years in this position and he has been constantly building the business up. The business has become huge. They currently have 10 full-time members that are paid. I should say not full-time, but paid members. They need to add two more. Um, he needs to add two more EMTs, and he wants one to also fill a supervisory role, because uh, he is frankly treading water, trying to keep up. There's, you know, if you think about how that's grown over the years, I can understand. Um, it's going to increase the budget. Uh, let taxpayers know, I, the, the biggest takeaway I got last night was all of our tax dollars that we pay towards the CMS uh, system goes to the paid help. We are, we are paying the payroll, okay? All the equipment, the supplies, the ambulances, they fund all of that through their charges. So for anybody that's wondering, geez, I just paid this big tax bill this year and now I'm getting charged for ambulance service, that's the reason why. We're paying just to keep those professionals there for when they're needed. Mm -hmm. And you know, I brought up at the meeting, if you think back to the 70s when we had my father-in-law, Earl Parsons, running an ambulance service, which was very much appreciated, mm -hmm. but it simply was a ambulance service. It was a ride to the emergency room. You didn't have any uh, advanced life support riding with you. And that's so important. And we, I bet we can't put a number to thousands of people we've saved in the last uh, 20, 30 years because of it. And just to let the public know, you know, um, they've given us uh, an idea in terms of growth patterns here with, with some of this data. And uh, since 2014, we've seen increases for ambulance calls in the area of, you know, uh, 502 in 2014 to now it's almost 1,300. Wow. So, um, and, and then the other side of that is there's a, there's a great graph here that shows call volume versus number of volunteers. Mm -hmm. So in 2014, it's hard to read here, right? 2014, there was 802 calls, I believe, with a total of 59 volunteers working. 502, I think it was. Is it 502? Yeah, 502, and, and they were at 1298 in 2020. Yeah, now in 22, they're, they're going to, they figure they're going to breach 1,400 calls for the year, and they're at 34 volunteers. Huh. Yeah. Another reason why they need to hire two more full, you know, paid is because COVID has reduced the number of volunteers. You know, some of it was because of uh, because of the disease, being afraid to bring home to their families. They volunteered less, uh, and then some of it's the nature of the beast because of the amount of training. Right. Uh, it's, it, it kind of, if you look, the last two years they've dropped down a lot. Yeah, they've seen a decrease in the 16 volunteers between 2014 and 2021. So, yep. So. But I guess at the end of the day, when you go through this, the one that that is is going you need to look at is a three-year plan for all three districts. And that I couldn't see. So that's that particular slide that you're referencing, Tom. No okay. supervisor trying to. It's hard to see. So, for an example. Uh, currently, this year we are taxed four hundred and seventy-one thousand dollars for Champlain. That's sixty-eight cents a thousand to the taxpayer. In comparison, Altona EMS is three dollars and thirty-six cents per thousand. Town of Clinton is a dollar fifty-nine. Lion Mountain a dollar thirty-two. 
and Dannemore is 302. Now, part of the reason for that difference is, is they, they, all the taxpayers pay for everything. I, I don't, don't quote me if it's in all four of those districts, but they don't get charged for the ride. But I pay for your ride, and you pay for his ride. Essentially, the taxpayers so pay for, for everything. So that's, that's why there's such a large difference. Three are planning for Champlain. Uh, for just Champlain, without Rosas, Rosas Point and Moores, uh, we're currently at 214,000. 2023, there will be at 300,000 is their projection that they're going to need for their budget. We will go from 68 cents a thousand to 95 cents a thousand. Now, you know, we... And, and, and if I recall, you know, speak up please, Brian, Jason. Um, and I don't believe you were on the board at the time. Um, I think last year's increase we saw was substantial. Um, I think it was up close to 30%. Wow. So, this is on top of that. It is. It's on top of that. It's on top of the reassessments as well. Correct. Um, and then you'll you'll see Moore's and Rogers Point will be uh, they're currently at 126,000, and they'll be going to 150. When asked why we pay a lot, much larger share, it's based off the number of calls and the population. But there was 647 calls in Champlain in 2021, 381 in Moores, and 270 in Rogers Point. So that kind of gives you a breakdown of how that split. But I don't know. I know it's expensive, but... Oh, well, it's an invaluable service. Right. right. Let's, let's be honest. You, let's be honest. you have to have it. I agree. Yeah. Um, I, I still don't know, even with the, an increase you know, in their budget, how they're going to deal with certain um, issues that they're challenged with, which is one, they're having a hard time getting volunteers between 4 p.m. and 6 p.m. So well, that, if there are some young folks out there that are interested in, yeah. uh, you know, donating some time to public service, you know, uh, I think now's that, the time to do that. That's part of the reason for, for the two new full uh, paid EMTs is, right. is to, to bridge that gap. Okay. That will close the gap on that on that four to six between the because they will cover that their shift is going to be covering that gap only, not only not okay. only two hours a day but it's going to cover that gap okay. and then also into the nights and the weekends. But don't quote me, but I believe with those two new paid plus the one they currently have and two other volunteers, they'll be able to go out with multiple ambulances. Right now they can only cover one call. All right. The second call is, they can't call out. Yes, so, well. so if you get a call to Moore's, you know, in that time, in that little time frame, try not to get sick during that time right. frame because you don't. If you call, some another call comes in, they're hurting. Now, so, so in terms of regulations, are they? Is there a, a minimum number that they have to have on a vehicle to respond to an emergency call? I think, I think it's a driver and and. And an EMT. Either, either, and an EMT is the minimal. I believe, but you know what? That's a question I would have loved to have heard last night. I'm going to ask that question. Of, yeah. of course, I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure. I would have liked to have attended that meeting just because I'm a liaison to, between you know the departments, and I'm yeah. sure I could have gathered some, yeah. some yeah. information yeah, I don't just, have right now. Yeah. Just the supervisors and the mayors. Right, right. Um, he's welcome to come to any of our board meetings mm -hmm. if you have. If you have questions, so if you feel you want to bring him, bring Corey to one of our meetings to explain the budget, I mean, maybe as it gets closer, it'd be better because right now he provided a draft, but even what he gave me, which I'll pass around, it's not accurate because he quickly realized he hadn't updated two or three of these fields. Um, but this is just the, the draft budget. To carry okay. that. And now, if I could also get a copy of the original PowerPoint. So. I pass that down to Rick and just, just give me a copy back after I give okay. me the original Thank back. You. Okay, so moving along, is there any more discussion Thank you. needed on that? If it feels good enough? It's an informational item, right? Now. It's an informational item. Um, you know, we'll act on it when he gets the final budget. We'll, I'm just you know, forewarning you and the taxpayers what's coming. It's, right. 
It's going to increase because of needing more personnel. You want to see it? And trying to close the gap and not. It's hard to explain. You have to be at the meeting to see the slides. Okay. Next is the um, request for proposals that I did. The RFP for planning services. Uh, if anybody has any changes required, I need to know because this needs to go. This needs to go out. So we're, we're, as you know, we're applying for a grant. River Street Planning and Development is applying for that grant. What goes along with the grant application is uh, we sent letters out, I mentioned that, uh, we sent letters out to area representatives, area leaders, business groups, asking them to give them, we gave them a template, a sample letter, just saying, please turn this around and support us in getting funding to, to do this comprehensive plan. So as those come back, we have to send them to, to River Street. They upload it with the grant application. The RFP as well has to be done very similar. So if you guys approve this, what we'll have to do is we'll send this out to various engineering groups asking them for a proposal on cost. So um, again, I got something from the Association of Towns and. Uh, did my thing on it, made champlains. <laughs> but uh, did anybody find anything in the writing that needs to be addressed? Because a lot of the, a lot of it was used from uh, the association's template, and then a lot of it was added by me. So I want to make sure that we felt it was, it was thorough and written well enough to go out. So. Exactly what changes were made to this request for proposals in comparison to the last copy? Oh boy, that's a good one to ask. So when you get into the uh, the purpose, for an example, yes, uh, that's all rewritten because the other town's uh, purpose was certainly different. Their mm -hmm. their uh, their land use regulations were enacted at different times. We are doing a comprehensive uh, plan with the village. So as you can see, it, you know, this request is intended to help town and village of Champlain select a qualified experience consultant. Um, I think when you go down to the scope or background, I make it very clear that it's that we are doing this together because we need to know that this is a, a joint effort. Sure. Yeah, you have that in that first paragraph. In the purpose? Yes, or in the scope. That's what I thought. And also I put in there that to make it known that we, uh, we desire to also revise our zoning laws following this comprehensive plan being completed, and the revision of the zoning laws will be contingent on grant funding. So this lets, this lets the engineer know that we're doing both. We're asking for a proposal for this, but if we get grant funding, we're going to be looking to do the, the second half as well. So Rick, I can't really answer your question. I have to go through this in detail. And, and according to, I believe the, and it's not numbered, but uh, I'm going to say you're probably on page number five. This has to be received by them by July 9th. Is that accurate, Tom? Yeah, that's the date that I have put okay. in there, but um, okay. I may have to adjust that depending on how quickly I can come up with the list and, and get it out to give them enough time to look at it. That was just a, a plug. Mm -hmm. 
I don't believe I need a resolution to, to approve this. I just need your approval. I guess I'd like it in the form of a motion, but for the record, <coughs> just to get it out, to send it out. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think it, I don't think something like this requires going to the attorney. Yeah. You, you're not obligating any funding. No, funds on our part. So. Exactly. I'm just requesting quotes. Yeah. So if you agree with that. So, yeah, and I haven't you, had a chance to go to, through uh, for the fine tooth comb either. So we can table it. Um, yeah. I don't want to table it to the next meeting though. Can we get back the email with any corrections required and move it forward? Yep, I think that's fine. So that's fair. Can we make a motion then to, to do exactly it, what you just said? Because it does need to. It does. Can we pick a date? And, and that way we know, Tom, so people can attend to it quickly. The, the end of this week? Right. That's, that's what right. I'm thinking. I would say... That's what I'm thinking. Did you say the end of this week? Yeah. yeah. If you can, that would be awesome. Because it does have to go out in order to... I think once approved, she can upload it as, as it stands. I don't think she needs proof that it went out to anybody. So as long as it goes out... To her by by no. that date I threw in there July 9th, I think we're okay. But yeah, if you can do it at the end of this week or even one week from today as a as a deadline, that would be great. Yeah, because there's a it, there's, there's a lot of density here. Yeah, it's this is there is an awful not, lot and, and, and I've read some of it, but I haven't really had a lot okay. of time to No, it's not it's not it's not a fun. <laughs> Okay. So do you do you want a do you want a motion to um, move forward this pending any changes that we discuss? Um, yeah, that's, that's fair. That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Um, so it'll be just pending whatever um, clerical changes need to be made. So I'll, I'll make that motion then, if you want. Okay. So uh, I'll make the motion to accept this. This um, proposal is plan service here. Yeah, RFP to me. Yeah, with the um, uh, with possibility of any clerical changes that can occur with a timeline of no longer than one week from today. I'll sorry. That sounds good, thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Carried. Thank you. Uh, next is we have resolution number 13. So I just I want to ask about the um, EMS. So it, it, there may be no changes, but the um, uh, Fair Play Ambulance Cost Recovery Act that um, is legislation the New York State Assembly uh, was looking to include in their budget. Um, that was endorsed by Assemblyman Billy Jones. Is, will that, does that play any role in, in this and in their budgeting, or is that just simply uh, the person who uses the ambulance service no longer pays the service? It's going to be provided through an insurance carrier. I think it's going to help eliminate a lot of the costs that they have to uh, that they have to eat. In other words, if they build, it's going to help them. 
it's going to help that. It, it, yeah, because because I'm sure there's many families that can't just afford cannot it. afford it. Well, yeah, currently if they bill two thousand yeah. um, dollars and somebody only has Medicare, right. they're going to get four hundred. And Corey quickly pointed out, if we build four hundred, we can only get ten. <coughs> Know, so they bill accordingly. So they have to, unless they have supplemental insurance, that's all they that's all they get. Okay. And and there's even still even even with uh, many health coverage plans, Jason, I, I know because I went through this, you still have to pay a certain amount out of pocket. Yeah. So and, and I'm sure there's people that can't afford it. Mm -hmm. so. True. True. And they don't. Um, Not just Medicare or Medicaid. They do. They do. Um, use collections for people that uh, do not have insurance and they are supposed to pay out of pocket and they just won't pay at all. Mm -hmm. um, so he said 11% of all their billing gets paid in full. That's all? That's all. So I think, I'm not sure on that bill because I haven't read the details of it, but I believe that's going to help close yeah, that gap yeah. a little bit. You, you mean, you, that may be a question you want to ask them, how that fits into their overall budget moving forward. If that is something that will help, it may, they may be able to, you know, we, we might, they might be able to see a decrease in this, possibly, if they know they're going to be getting recouped costs that they're not currently getting now. Uh, just a thought. I mean, they, but maybe it has to play out before they actually know what budgetary yeah. it's going to does that make sense? I mean, it does. So. Well, because well, again, I got to point out that the, the taxes are strictly for the personnel. Okay. At approximately sixty thousand dollars per man, uh, wages and benefits. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And they don't make a lot. He, he starts there. At, he wants to. He wants to raise the rates. Currently, they start at fifteen dollars an hour. All that responsibility. Exactly. Oh so he's trying to increase. So as part of this plan yeah. is to increase the wage. So did they at, at this meeting, Tom? Did they talk about benefits and and what what the costs are of those benefits that they're paying to these yet to these EMS volunteers? Well, the the uh, the ALS personnel, I think he said, make somewhere in the vicinity of forty five to fifty thousand, but they're with with benefits, they're sixty to sixty five. And we'll that's the only comparison he, he gave. Okay. Those are the advanced life support paramedics, which are the highest paid. Um, and I don't quote me what the hourly rate was, but it still, I don't think, it was for the, even like thirty dollars an hour. So, can they use money that they receive from their services to help pay their? Staff? They have been. That's what he's trying to close well, a little bit. This is what I'm trying to do. So yes, just, they have been. There might be a way that this could help them. Maybe yeah. if they're maybe saving maybe. money in one area, they might be able to then divert some of those funds in order to... I would have to guess, yes. But that would be a good question if we bring them in, if we want to you know, get more detailed and more information. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to backtrack. I just... No, that's fine. That's fine. Good questions. Yep. Good points. So, uh, I did this per email at the last minute for the uh, for Knights of Columbus. You all agreed to it, but we need to approve it tonight. This is Resolution 13, congratulating the Champlain Knights of Columbus. Father, Francis Shia, Council 3525, on the occasion of its 70th anniversary. Uh, I'll just read this. First one is a preamble, whereas the Town of Champlain Board takes great pleasure in recognizing and paying tribute to the Champlain Knights Columbus, Father Francis Chaillon, Council 3525, whose endeavors have faithfully served the welfare of the citizens of the Town of Champlain. And be it further resolved that this resolution is adopted by the Town Board on this 14th day of June, 2022, and a copy of this resolution suitably embossed be transmitted to Bruce West, Grand Knight, Father Francis Chaillon, Council 3525 in Champlain, New York. Uh, I will make the motion to approve this resolution. I have it seconded by all of you. If that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> all in favor? 
Aye. 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 So we're going to, do you already have a copy of this, too, or have you already done it? I have a copy, but I have something there. All right, next one is a resolution endorsement application for a smart girls comprehensive planning grant to develop a new town and village of Champlain comprehensive plan. Mm -hmm. This one I'm going to read. This one's required as well to apply for this grant. Whereas the town of Champlain recognizes that a comprehensive plan is the blueprint for a community's vision for growth and sustainability and informs the legal framework for land use development policies. Whereas comprehensive plans should be updated every five to ten years. Whereas the Town of Champlain comprehensive plan was last updated in 1992, and therefore an update is long overdue and critically important to ensure that the town has a community supported and coordinated plan for future development policies and resource allocation that incorporates smart growth principles and sustainability practices based on an analysis of existing conditions, projected trends, and strong community engagement. Whereas the town and village of Champlain recognize the benefits and importance of inter-municipal cooperation and coordination of planning and resource allocation and seek to develop a joint town and village comprehensive plan. Whereas the town has identified the New York State Department of State Smart Growth Comprehensive Planning Grant Program as a funding partner to assist with the development of a new intermunicipal town and village comprehensive plan. Now therefore be it resolved that the town board of the town of Champlain does approve and endorse the New York State consolidated funding application to the New York State Department of State Smart Growth Comprehensive Planning Grant. Upon approval of said request, the town will enter into and execute a project agreement with the New York State Department of State. So I entertain a motion to approve the resolution. So I have a question. So will this grant pay for 100% of the preparation of this comprehensive plan? I believe it's 90. 90%. Make a motion to adopt the resolution as read by the supervisor. Thank you. And then second. No, I'll second that. Thank you. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Resolution approved. Okay. Does that would be a good grant, ninety percent. Yeah, I believe it's nothing to sneeze at. No, that's awesome. That's mm -hmm. awesome. So, the village and the town's college. Very manageable. Okay. Um, Tom, can we go back to just for a moment? Um, Chris Matat, code enforcement officer, his correspondence in regards to um, being contacted by the Niagara Hose Company Number One yes. in regards to the Champlain Fire Department. Did you need me to read it? I can read it to everybody. But. Did I go buy it? I thought it was coming up. Is it at the bottom of our agenda? Did I miss the... No. I don't have it. You don't have it? Well, I have a copy of it. Okay. No, go ahead, please. Um, this is to the Town of Champlain Board, uh, Re Champlain Fire Department Station. Members of the board, I was recently contacted by members of the Niagara Hose Company 1, Champlain Fire Department, in regards to the construction of their new fire station on Route 9 near Walgreens. During the planning, they asked if the building permit fee could be waived. At this time, I am requesting the board allow me to waive the building permit fee for the new fire station when the application is submitted as it is a public safety building. The fee will, would be approximately $1,100. So yes, that was meant to be, that was added late this afternoon. Correct. Meant to be new business. I know I've got a copy of it here. Thank you for bringing it up. Do you want this to know my copy? I know I have one because I made it happy. But yes, please. So what, what Chris did was put that into a form of a letter. And uh, I think we should move on that tonight. 
I, I, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, if you sent it, I'm sure it's here. I, I made a copy now. It doesn't matter. You can just thank mm -hmm. uh, supervisor for all that. Sometimes I don't get that. Blame it on him. Actually, this one, this came in from Chris today, so that's why it was okay. So it's, Correct. It's, it's not any less important. It just it just. I'm only picking Tom. I know. I know, but I do bring a lot of stuff to this thing. So. Um, how does the board feel? I think we should uh, put it in form of a motion, put it on the floor, on whether we're going to waive the fees. Um, so I'll start by making a motion myself to um, to allow uh, our code officer to waive the building permit fee for a new fire station when the application is submitted. And then we'll go from there. We have a second, and we can have discussion. No, I'll second that. Okay, now mm -hmm. discussion. Well, my question is, has the town ever done a, a waiver before for other projects? Uh, in regards to? A building permit. Yeah, but especially in regards to? Uh, public safety. Public safety. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Just questioning this. So, yeah, it's a good yeah. question. It is a good question. Do we? I don't believe. I don't think. I, don't think we've ever I, I know I've never had one in five years being on the board ever. So yeah. what, like for example, the EMS station. EMS station. Like, did, did they but get a waiver? They, I don't think they ever asked for. Correct. That's, yeah. thing. That's valid. You know. Mm -hmm. I mean, we can we can discuss that and see if we want to see what they were charged. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah. one way or the other, we're going to pay for it. I mean, yeah, it, indirectly or directly. Indirectly or Correct. directly. So I think it would help with their budgeting if. If we waive the fee and it's it is for public safety, yeah, I mean, it's not I'm inclined to go with that because we mm -hmm. need them. Um, it may help them meet their goal of mm -hmm. getting started, correct? Right. By not draining their funds. Mm -hmm. um, I agree with Brian. Uh, either either way, the taxpayers are going to pay the fee because it's for a fire district, so I mean it's going to end up in their budget, in their bills. I understand why you're asking because I thought my first read the letter I had that thought and I couldn't answer it because I don't know. And that's all we would say yes to those two. Those other ones. Well, that's two because I want it to happen. It's not yeah. something that comes up very often anyway. I mean, other than the EMS building, when is that? Where else is there public safety? I guess is my question. So yes. here, here's my question. I, do we open ourselves up for example like on um, the West Service Road where you have state police barracks you have and, and again that's already constructed but right. are we opening ourselves up for that again over and over I, I just want dialogue mm -hmm. right. discord sure. that's all <laughs> uh, I think this is a direct benefit to the town residents right. and, and I'm not saying state police and border aren't but this is something town what residents are going to be paying for. As, co as, as, compared, to, for as compared to a New York State facility right. or a federal facility. Yes. Yeah. Right. Exactly what I'm getting at. Yeah. 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 This, this is strictly driven by town taxpayers. So that we're not setting a precedent by, by waiving it. It would be on a case-by-case -case basis is how we would approach this. Yeah. This is probably the only time that I, I can recollect that mm -hmm. anybody's asked oh, for a waiver. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's just not normally done. Uh, in this case, it, it, like Tom's saying, it does help their budget. Uh, I mean, one way or the other, the taxpayers are going to pay for it, but I think it's a good faith gesture mm -hmm. to, the, to the village. It's successful. Yeah. yeah. To, to the fire district. Yeah. Do you see as clerk, do you see any issues with this? I mean, no. Legality wise, it's up to us, right? Yeah, it's up to you. So I just okay. don't know if it's going to bring other people to ask the same question when they want. I don't know. It's well, up to you. Um, Public <coughs> case by case. You know, yeah, I, I mean, say at that point. Make you know, it clear in my motion that it, it is being done for the fire district, for the mm -hmm. 
Sound of Champlain Fire District. Yeah, Niagara the Hose Company, number one Champlain Fire Department, was actually how he wrote it. Mm -hmm. um, I guess to try to make it clear that we're only doing it because that is town tax dollars that we have to pay for it anyways. It's not spread anywhere else. Yeah. Local fee, or is that a fee that gets to the state? No, that's, that's local. That so comes to hundred percent stays local. Hundred percent building permit, yeah, stays local. Yeah, yeah. Robin from Peter Pimmel. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to put that. Poor, bad enough. Any more discussion? We'll need a roll call on that one. Uh, Councilmember Rochester? Aye. Aye. <laughs> oh, wait, you can say Councilmember Moore? Aye. Councilmember Hunter? Aye. Councilmember Borey? Aye. Uh, Supervisor Charlie? Aye. Motion approved. Motion carried. Thank you. Thanks for bringing that up because obviously I was about to miss it, right? Hey, retired people have a lot of time on their hands, <laughs> sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good thing you have those sharp eyes. <laughs> okay, AES Northeast. Uh, we need to. I'm looking for approval to approve these uh, proposals mm -hmm. <coughs> so we can move forward. I. I want to inform you that pipeline is scheduled. We were trying to, they were scheduled for tomorrow, but there was no way we could put all the notices out in time for the yeah. residents to not feel blindsided. So currently it's scheduled for next Wednesday. We're trying to move it to Tuesday, Monday or Tuesday. <coughs> um, but that needs to be replaced. That was in there two days ago. <coughs> and that's what we have, water. And um, the, one, one of the pumps is leaking. <coughs> Thank you, I'll still get a job. <coughs> so we need to get this rolling because I'm afraid we're going to be in trouble. Mm -hmm. It's been an ongoing issue, hasn't it? For well, it's just <coughs> deteriorated to the point right. that it's leaking. So I have a, a question in, in terms of you the... You don't want to have uh, to call um, EMS? <laughs> 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 is it for Oh, good thing you didn't turn it off. Oh, that was so uh, I have a question in regards to the water booster pump. Uh, Thank you, Rick. That, uh, yes, um, 2022 uh, uh, hyphen 01, and that is in regards to the reimbursable expenses. Yep. So, what is that item on the list that would fall underneath that reimbursable expenses? It looks like it's mileage. That's it? Wow. So there's no other? Uh, and are, and are we, <coughs> how many people are, are we looking at that we're providing mileage to? I mean, how many staff? I'm just trying to wrap my head around that. And, and how many days do they think before this process would... So how many days of travel, I guess, is what I'm asking. Well, they've already been up here to assess both both of these, taken numerous photographs. I'm assuming it's not going to be a lot of trips in addition. But it's um, in addition to the 7,000. No, what I mean is in addition to what they've already done. I, I think they're pretty well prepared to start writing their RFP and, okay. and their proposal to start engineering it. Brian did point out a couple of structural problems in the building. Uh, that he feels should be addressed at this okay. time, so I, I may have to add that. If you could send me those photos, that would probably help. I'll do that tonight. Um, so what does it pertain to? Um, the moment? This is a crack in the wall. Yeah, it's cinder block. So <coughs> crack. And, uh, we talked about this in the old quarry room, you know, maybe sealing off. There, there's a vents in there that it used to open to air out the chlorine room. And there's an old gas heater that 
it really could be disconnected and remove the gas line completely because it's not ever going to be used. Yeah, there's just a chance of it leaking at some point. You abandon it for whatever. Yeah. However yeah. long it is. So, so in to include, in other words, the scope of the equipment we're fixing, Ryan found a few things in the building that he feels should be added at the same time. So I'll need to talk to to them about that. That could require a trip. <laughs> Other than that, I think they've got everything they need. I don't think they're going to be, you know, doing a lot of travel to build this uh, this engineered plan so it can go out the bed. Where are they coming out of? Well, they're... Maybe the other side they're, of Blackford. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're out towards Cliffhaven. Yeah. Their principal engineer uh, comes up here, I think, like once or twice a month. She's uh, near Buffalo. But she does most of her work remotely. So. I like that they're local. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was very impressed with uh, with their knowledge, their knowledge base. They were used at that school this year. Were they? They've been used for a lot of the towns in here. They, 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 they just completed a project Correct. last year in Beaton Town. Um, so I think we probably should do these separately. So for the okay. <laughs> letter of authorization 2022-01, do I have a motion to accept this proposal for that one was water booster pump skid upgrades? Yep, that was for uh, total estimate for design services, hourly not to exceed $7,000, plus reimbursable expenses. That's the only thing they listed was manage. If this one wouldn't, wouldn't include what Brian was. I don't know if it's going to change that or not. Yeah. I'd have to ask that question. If it was, I'd have to have them amend it, and we'd have to approve that. Fair. Yeah, I prove it as stated. I just soon have it amended and, and have it included. Yeah. Address well, it and be it during the work. Correct. It, at the time, why bring them up another time? Right. No, I agree, but can we, in case it doesn't change, it may not change. We approve this one, this yeah. dash 01, and then I'll talk to them tomorrow. Or yeah, because we're not sure. I mean, it may not entail much of a repair, it may just be a. Well, it's not, you know. What we're doing is, is just the engineered plan. Right. So if it doesn't create a lot of additional work to mm -hmm. engineer a plan to remove a heater and plug a hole, <laughs> essentially, and fix a crack, that's yeah. really what we're looking at. Yeah, I, I think they'd only have to add to the professional services is, is what, what it would be. Yep. So on that first page. Yep. Okay. But I could be wrong. I'll make a motion to uh, um, to authorize the, I guess, the letter of authorization. Correct. 2022-01 uh, for the water booster pump skid upgrades. I'll second that. Okay. Roll call, please. Councilmember Rochester. Aye. Councilmember Borey. Aye. Councilmember Moore. Aye. Councilmember Hunter. Aye. Supervisor Trombley. Aye. Thank you. Carries. Second one is letter of authorization 2022 02. This is for a pump station upgrades and evaluation on the Dubois Road. Anything extra there? This one here is. Uh, yeah, actually, there was some electric. Uh, Rick was asking what, what other thing, and I was just mentioning the electrical. Oh. But that was included, though. They, they are aware of that, and that's part of the scope. Mm -hmm. uh, what they'll be doing there is it's not only upgrades to the lift station yeah. itself, mm -hmm. um, but also the, uh, the wiring and the control, all the electrical boxes and control panels as well uh, will be part of that, uh, okay. that engineered plan and to go out the bid. And this one is for hourly not to exceed $3,750. Uh, 
plus reimbursable expenses of estimated mileage expense. Must be fifty dollars per trip. I'm scared my scooter. <laughs> <laughs> but the gas today. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> so I have a motion to approve that proposal. I'll make a motion and refer to the letter of authorization number 2022-02 for the pump station upgrades and evaluation, uh, which is located on the Duval Road. I'll second. Okay. Roll call, please. Councilmember Rochester? Aye. Councilmember Warren? Aye. Councilmember Moore? Aye. Councilmember Hunter? Aye. Supervisor Trombley? Aye. <coughs> Um, yeah, I know. I know. Um, we could, we're going to have to go to a, you're not going to be happy with me, but I've got to break the executive session at the end, so when we come back to the executive session, we'll cover that. Okay. Okay. So the next thing up is um, the letter from Jennifer Jewett and the recommend recommendations for the changes to the dog laws within the town. Um, we don't have to act on this. I think what I was hoping to, to do is to see how everybody felt about it and possibly table it. Maybe we look into this more to see how this aligns with other any input from the dog control officer too? And, and I'd also like to gather some insight from other municipalities that have dog control officers that have had to deal with similar situations and how they've kind of righted the ship. Um, because I think she has some very good points, but there might be some additions to that. Yeah, like so. valid. We're all valid. We're all valid. Like for one, yeah. yes. I myself use an invisible fence. Right. I'd be more than happy to put a sign because I can understand where people that are walking by and my dog happens to run towards its boundary, mm -hmm. barking because there's another dog, might feel like, oh, there's a loose dog. They don't know. Or right. Where if they know there's a fence there, they have a little bit more comfort level. So I get that. I wouldn't mind doing it. All right. But can I get a volunteer to, to look into that I research? Will. Thank you, Rick. I will. Yeah. I, I really don't have time, but I think we should. So what I want to do is I'll make a motion to table it mm -hmm. until we get further Research done. Council person Hunter's findings. Yes, that's what I'd like to do. I don't want to. That way, it, that way it stays on the books, and we we continue looking at it. Cause I think it's valid, but we have to determine what fits. Now, just as a general concern, anything that we bring forward is you know, the main main issue seem to be in the village of Champlain. If we make these changes to our our. Um, Animal control rules, laws, ordinances. Mm -hmm. Is that going to take effect in the village of Champlain? Uh, I believe they addressed this last night, and uh, from what I understand, they're waiting to find out what we do, and they're probably going to follow suit. I see. Because mm -hmm. we we employ the dog control officer, mm -hmm. so that's a the stand they took. Do you know who the uh, dog control officer is for the village of Rouse's Point? Is it the same? It's it is. It is. Jody, Jody. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And his number is on the Town of Champlain's website? Correct. So I will contact him first and then I'll reach out to other municipalities and see. Okay. Yeah. And, and <clears throat> I mean, she claims that, you know, she looked at, did a little research. I had asked, originally asked her to provide us the links that she had used, but mm -hmm. she didn't do that. But she said she found these, and she, as you can see, you know, the three-hour limit was an Albany city law. She also found it in New York State, and I'm cool with it. So you, you can probably do a little bit of right. perusing and find similar right. things out there that we can possibly, we would decide to mirror to. Maybe we want to. I think it needs more research. Right. So I need to. So I need to because I don't know if there's, you know, um, also from a you know, just a, a code perspective, can we require somebody in terms of their own personal property without setting a new law as to where that in-ground fence, you know, 10 feet from, you know, 30 feet from the center of the road? I, I, I don't know. I don't know what that looks like. 
So it probably looks like having to be in our code. I'm hoping. And, right? So, so I, it, it may might be something be new code. Right, which we'll have to do it when we do that full revision, hopefully in a couple of years. Correct. I Could think. you ask Jeff, what, is that what his name was? Um, the gentleman that you're going yes, to be yes, reaching yes. out to. Mm -hmm. Can you uh, see what he has in regards to that? Or either that, or can you send me his phone number and I can call him and ask him? Sure. Okay, so I made a motion to table this until um, Rick does research and uh, comes back to the board with with examples and suggestions. Is that a second? I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> okay, motion carries. So we'll look at that. Thank you, Rick, for, for offering. Oh, and I have a note. We have to do a transfer. <laughs> Sorry, I must have slipped that one in, huh? Okay, we need to transfer some uh, COVID money. This is for the John Deere uh, wing grooming mower. Uh, so we're transferring $10,000 from the general fund to the highway DB fund. Probably just for gas. <laughs> so I make a motion that. Uh, we give Sarah permission to transfer money from COVID to the Highway DB fund for uh, the John Deere wing grooming mower in the amount of $10,000. I'll second that motion. Thank you. And we'll need a roll call. Councilmember Rochester? Aye. Councilmember Bory? Aye. Councilmember Bohr? Aye. Councilmember Hunter? Aye. Supervisor Trombley? Aye. Thank you. Motion carries. Uh, Brian's even. Hey, he's going to be right back. All right. Well, I'd like to make a motion to go into executive session for a personnel issue. Uh, so I need to make the motion to leave the regular meeting and go into executive so session. Do I have a second? I second. Okay. All in favor, but I don't have, I don't have Brian here, so. Jason, as a side note, did you get a chance to watch the Tonys? I did. Uh, Wonderful. It. Yes. That. The woman can sing like no tomorrow. Who's that? Oh, I'm trying to remember the uh, the play that she was in. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she was just in. Uh, I can't even pronounce her name, to be honest with you. Yeah, yeah. she was in Steven Spielberg's. So. Yes. Just a wonderful, story. wonderful she performer. Won she won an Oscar award for playing uh, Anita. Yeah. So Brian, we have a, a motion on the floor to lead regular session go into um, executive session. It has been seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to do that. Could you check the camera, please? I'm going to step out real quick. I'll be right back. Oh, that's okay. I was going to step into our into my office for this. Field. Oh, you were? <laughs> <laughs> so, for the record, uh, no action was taken, no decisions were made, we're just going to gather more information. And now I entertain a motion to leave executive session, go back into the regular meeting to finish. I like those words. I'll make a motion to uh, exit executive session and return to the regular meeting. Second that. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion no. carries. So the only thing left here is we all have copies of uh, this resolution from the town of Champlain and village of Champlain. I'm not going to read it. Um, have you reviewed it and do you uh, approve moving mm -hmm. forward with it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What does it look like? Number 14. 
Number 15. 15. Yeah, it doesn't have a number on there. Um, it is number 15. It is. I'm... I think I gotta go back further. Want a copy of it? Um, I'm sure I have it, but. Is it this one that says Julie resolution to transfer 75? No. 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 Oh, I don't. Have That's it. the reason why I'm being old. Yeah, I, I, I. Yeah, that's the one I. I, I didn't. You don't think you saw it? You saw no, it? I don't think you saw just... it. I don't think bit? there's going to be a problem. No. no. <laughs> I, I, yeah. Okay, as long as it's worded well. I, I just, just as long uh, as I know what it is, I, it's on the uh, yeah. agenda. Yeah, I do remember reading this. Yeah. Julie, can I take it again? It's. Uh, I don't know why we're really secretive. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because it has resolution 13, resolution 14, and then, not that one. Right. It's not listed on the agenda here, right? No. Yeah, it is. It is? Sure. The very last one. On the agenda. Oh, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Right next there to it where is. Where I wrote number eight. Wonder you know what it is? Very nice. When you send those extras today, I don't reprint the agenda, so it's not. But yes, oh, it oh, is. Oh, right. <laughs> I, I didn't either. That's, yeah, that's, just, that's why. Okay, just tip. Because I know you did it, but I just didn't hurt them. I didn't see okay. that. That's why. Okay. So, wait, are you making a motion, motion to approve it? Mm -hmm. Oh. I know, but I really need to read the preamble, don't I? Mm. How's it back now? Yep. <laughs> why is it such a secret? Not because Richard's sitting here. That's right. Oh, yeah, well. Richard. <laughs> No oh, you're not supposed to know it's coming? Why aren't yeah. you? So we're, appro we're approving something that will be presented to you later, Richard, okay? So this is resolution number 15, <coughs> correct? Town of Champlain, Village of Champlain, resolution of co commendation to Eagle Scout Richard McGrath. And whereas Richard McGrath, through his diligence and rigorous efforts, has achieved scouting's highest and most prestigious rank, Eagle Scout, and whereas the Boy Scouts of America and its members are dedicated to the development of character and leadership. And that's pretty much the preamble. Uh, I would like to read the rest of it to you officially afterwards. So now therefore be it resolved that on this day, June 26, 2022, this is when we will present it, the town of Champlain Board, the Village of Champlain Board of Trustees, Clem Richard McGrath, and achieving the rank of Eagle Scout. All in favor of approving this resolution? Aye. 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 Okay, so I, aye. So you're not doing a motion, or like a first and second, no? Just we can, one? okay, so I'll make a, a motion to approve as written. And I'll need a second, and then we, will, we can vote again. I'll second. <laughs> Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The resolution carries on this date, and we will uh, we will present it later. You can hear the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> while you're on camera, for those that will watch the meeting, the town, and if I can speak on behalf of the village of Champlain, thank you very much for your dedicated service, for your service project to become Eagle Scout and how it will benefit all the municipalities. Thank you so much. We, we appreciate uh, your time, effort, and dedication. Very well said, Mr. Mm -hmm. Borey. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Richard. Uh, achieving Eagle Scout is, is a huge achievement, a and I think it speaks of character. So mm -hmm. continue that in your, uh, in your adult life. Yes, thank you. you. Are, as Mr. Hunter was asking, earlier for younger volunteers and people to step up. Leaders. Leaders. And you are a role model for sure. others to follow in that in that vein. So thank you. Thank you. Okay. And uh, I have no old business. Is there any further business? Uh, the only old business I have is in regards to EDUs. Uh, I have one letter that um, I've written that um, I put before Chris and, and Brian for their approval. Um, 
we've got one change that will need to occur to the new listing. So once I have a copy of that, I'll uh, get a copy to the to uh, to you and we okay. can go from there. Okay. So. Very good. Okay. Any other business to go in front of the board? <coughs> if not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion that we adjourn the meeting. I second the motion. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. It's the, best one. the best one to make it second to the Very yeah. entertaining. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Nobody's opposed. Surprise. Thank you, Richard.